Cheryl Boyce Davies is a professor of Africana Studies and English at Cornell University. She joins us now live from Ithaca, New York. Thanks so much uh, for being with us. Uh, first of all, Carol, simple question. I mean, uh, do you think this is progress, uh, re changing this imagery, removing it and discussing it, or is it, is it really just too late? Uh, it, it no, took so long. It's late, but it's so needed. It's progress, but gosh, so slow. My, one of my colleagues wrote a piece in 2015 in the New York Times asking that, shouldn't we, at least by now, remove this racial stereotype, which comes from slavery? Um, and even though it was updated, all of the symbology surrounding both Aunt Jemima, Uncle Ben, and all of those other figures come out of plantation slavery. So you have an updating of them, but you don't have a changing or removal of them. So I'm Really happy to see this happen Good. late, but there's a movement <laughs> which is never. pushing all of these changes, right? Yeah. Uh, let me ask you, though, about some of the kind of the details in this imagery, because uh, would you distinguish between any of them? I mean, for example, Aunt Jemima to me always seems so wrong. It was that kind of gone with the wind throwback. Uh, but when I looked at Uncle Ben, I mean, it almost seemed kind of entrepreneurial and, and arguably flattering in a way, the way you would see, you know, Paul Newman's face on his salad dressing. Uh, or do, you, do you distinguish between some of the labeling or is it all uh, time to change no, it? Absolutely. Abs the, pro the problem is there was a range of these imaging. So first of all, you have the use of black people's labor, right, in plantation slavery. And then once you have the advertising industry opening up, it begins now to use some of those same representations to sell products, every kind of product from soap, detergent, um, use in household products. Uh, so you have mammy representations everywhere. In fact, people began to collect those figures because they seemed so horrible and so much in need of being rescued from the kind of pres presentation. So including this image of cream of wheat with Uncle Ben's and all of that, essentially these are just modernized versions of black people only in service roles. So it's not the same as Paul Newman. He owned that brand this was his representation of himself and so on. But with Uncle Ben, this is a captured image. Right. And put now to sell products okay. and maintain for years and years and years. Fair enough. Let, let's talk a little bit about NASCAR, which I find particularly intriguing because um, that flag, a lot of people tend to romanticize Southern culture in the past. And that flag is symbolic of that romanticism. When actually in... in in other circles, as for example, the way I was educated, that was something I was taught to be ashamed of. Uh, that re it represented a past that meant minorities were treated as something less than human. Uh, they were not, they were robbed of their rights. Um, but then when you move into other areas of the United States, I went to University of Missouri, for example, a lot of people hung that flag and they were, to me, surprisingly proud of it. It made me question how much it goes into basic US education and how we're taught to see our history. And we're in some parts of the country, we're taught to be ashamed of the discrimination in the past, while in other parts, there's something to be proud of in the Confederate hist history, for example. Yeah, and, and this is clearly now stoking a big division within the United States, particularly around representations of these images. But the point is, one has to make a clear distinction about what the use of those images were for. And often the Confederate flag, when used, were used by white supremacists. Um, and so if students were using them, they either did not study or did not take or study African-American or American history in its broad sense, or they were never informed about the implications of those, or they knew and were deliberately using them to provoke um, negative responses. So right. it's, it, I mean, there are series of meanings that one should attach to people still holding on. I mean, there were people who took down the Confederate flag, Brie Newsom climbed and pulled it down um, in her state. So we have several versions of that taking place. So it's really interesting. It's a big step forward to see NASCAR, which has a huge population of people who participate in, in their races. Certainly. Um, uh, definitely, I mean, but as you take a step forward, I don't know if you'll consider this a step back because we actually just found out a few hours ago that a judge in Virginia has indefinitely extended an injunction that actually prevented uh, the governor of Virginia from removing a statue of uh, Confederate General Robert E. Lee. Uh, do you think non-minorities actually understand why this imagery and those statues can actually hurt 
there seems to be an attitude, as we said before, that it's, it's part of history, so it has to be respected, and it shouldn't cause any kind of, any kind of pain in remembering. Mm -hmm. But what interests me is that it's happening all over the world. I mean, in Trinidad and Tobago, now they're talking about removing Christopher Columbus statues. So basically, these representations have to do with white uh, conquest in a range of locations, and they were represented as such. And black people were supposed to just humbly accept that this is what happened in their life and in their past, and they need to see it every day. But we have so many wonderful people who should be represented, who did not, who were not involved with in enslaving other people and who were involved in actually transformative um, positions for those countries. So changing street names, what I'm impressed with is the range of unfinished decolonizations that are taking place right now around the world, in the Caribbean, in Africa, and uh, definitely in the United States as well. Okay, Carol Boyce-Davies, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you again.